everyone. Welcome to the first episode of the Wealthy Wendy Show. I hope you will enjoy this show and I hope it will inspire and change life of a lot of person. Our first guest this afternoon, her name is Shereen Spencer, affectionately called by her family Shevine or Chev, is a second child for her mom and dad. A graduate of the Papine High School class of 2010, Sharon was very active on the school's cheerleading team. Her first job was as a personal assistant at Sajikor, and she immediately wanted to become a life insurance agent, which is now classified as a financial advisor. Her journey was a rough one, but she, was, she persevered during what it takes to get her back. She's a mother to two beautiful girls, Dijonet, Dijonel. And Dijonel, <laughs> right. I don't want to spoil their names. Two beautiful little girls. She's also an MDRT qualifier for 2019 and 2020, a Century Club qualifier for 2019, Branch Rookie of the Year for 2019, four times iFlyer qualifier, outstanding advisor for Sajikor March 2021. She comes today, she's here to share her story and how she's loving her career and why you should never give up on your dreams guys this story is such an exciting story i'm not even gonna talk anything about your story because i don't want to blow the cover i want you to sit in your seat and just watch to the end and enjoy this lovely lady and oh she overcame i know she's one of sajikor's finest <laughs> On the show yeah thank you for having me as your first guest yeah. i've been very special yeah. <laughs> so shireen yeah. i want you to start by telling the folks how was it for you growing up well um growing up i wouldn't say i had it hard because uh, my parents they work very hard so my parents they are um coffee farmers right so we come from in the rural part of saint andrew and um I really grew up watching my parents work very hard. I think that's why I work so hard now because I used to see my parents leave home from like four o'clock in the morning because I have to walk up on this hill, take probably like half an hour to walk on the hill and then they start picking the boxes of coffee until night. So I saw how hard they worked and that kind of inspired me to, you know, to work hard myself. So um, my parents, they basically tried to provide every single thing for us we weren't short of anything but um i finished school in 2010 what school you went to papine high okay. so i finished papine high in 2010. i wanted to um i wanted to go to sixth form right but um at that point my parents they were going through a separation so it was it was a roller coaster and um I didn't want to just stop there, so I started applying for jobs, and that's how I got the job at Sajikor as a personal assistant. Yeah. So I actually started working when I was 16, because I left school at 16. Wow. Yes, yeah, so I worked for a financial advisor. But um, when I came here and I saw how oh, the agents worked, and you know, they had their, they could work on their own time. And I remember um, when, when I came to work, and the advisor that I was working for, I was there and was feeling tired, and it was like, I'm gonna go home and get some rest. What time was that? It was like about 12 o'clock in the day, and he said, wow. You know, I'm gonna go home and get some rest and maybe come back later. And I was like, So I thought when I came here, I thought it was like a nine to five. I thought that everybody would just come in from nine and work until five because that's what I was used to. Once I got here, he got here, right? So then I understood that um, financial advisors they earn, they earn good money. So I saw it and I was like, oh, if you work what? hard, yeah, if you work hard. <laughs> so when I saw it, I was like, whoa, you know, I think I would enjoy being a financial advisor because, um, I mean, the fact that you can work on your own timing, um, so you know what you put in is what you really get out and uh, the money would be good. Cause you know, as a personal assist assistant, you're not making much. 
so the money kind of drove me as well the time freedom yeah so um i asked the advisor that i was working for at the time i asked him um you know what's the requirement to become a financial advisor and mm -hmm. he told me you basically have everything already you just need to get a car because you have to have your own personal how much people. subject you had at the time I had seven subjects okay yes yeah, so i graduated with seven cxc's and um so i was looking at it and i said how am i gonna get a car with this salary so you know, I left. Um, I left the job. Um, to why, get did, some, why did you leave? Uh, um, because I wanted something better. It wasn't doing much for me. So sometimes I was even um, borrowing money to come back to work. So it really didn't make sense to me. So um, at that point, they had like the call centers coming out. Um, they had, uh, I think it was Ibex. I think Ibex was the yeah. first call center, but it was very hard to get into. So I sent out um, resumes, but you know, remember I'm 16 years old, so who's gonna, um, so the persons were saying they need NIS, so you can't get an NIS until you're 18. I didn't know that. Yeah, so you couldn't get mm -hmm. an NIS until you're 18 years old. So um, at that point, I met my husband, right? And um, I left from Kingston and I went to St. Mary. I'm still sending out resumes, but I got turned down for, um, I know it was because of my age. Well, no, at that point, at, the, at that time, I didn't know that it was because of age. But no, I was looking at it and be like, you know, who would want to, um, to, to give job to a 16-year-old or a 17-year-old? So I realized that I had to wait. But at 16 years old, mm -hmm. you could have decided that you wanted to at least... Your parents, your parents are okay. Yeah. You know they were going to a divorce. Yeah. You could have stayed home for a little bit and then still take care of you. But what what was driving you to go and get a job? Um, I think it was frustration coming from the home because um, you know, when persons are going through a separation, not everybody can deal with it. Um, like like adults then, because my parents they were they were arguing a lot, and then I had my little brother, and it was just so frustrating. And then um, seeing my my um, classmates, they're going into sixth form, and you know who not getting job and all like that. So I was just there. What, what happened to me? What about me? So I had to do it for myself. I'm like, no, man, I wait for mommy and daddy, you know. So I had to go out there and do it for myself. But at that time, you know. Me, my boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Kingston, and I went to Saint Mary. So when I went to Saint Mary, as I said, I was still sending out um applications. But you went to Saint Mary. Yes. Yeah, so, so I left Saint Andrew and went to Saint Mary because Why? my boyfriend no was living in Saint Mary. Oh, so you got living with your boyfriend? Yeah. At sixteen. At sixteen. <laughs> your festive door. Yes. So I left and I went to um to live there. And then um, I started applying for jobs still, but at 17 now, I got um, work at a bar. Wow. So that was the only place that, you know. They in St. Mary? Yeah, in okay. St. Mary. So at that time, I actually told him I was 18. Oh, so you lied. Yeah. So I told him I was 18 to get a job. Can't nobody want to give me work. <laughs> and you wanted to earn yeah. your own money. Yeah, and I wanted to earn money. So I was there and I was um, earning money and I said, all right, then so... From here, because I still had it in my mind that I want to become a financial advisor, so I said, how am I going to get the car? So I said, all right, then, um, so I started saving up, and I started, and I started a business, all right? What kind of business you started? It was like, a, you know, like a corner shop. <laughs> but I said, like a food. Yeah, because at the bar, it was like on and off. So I wanted, um, when I got time off, I could earn additional money from the shop mm -hmm. so um i opened the shop about not even a month after i opened the shop and it was doing extremely well because i was creative whatever i'm doing i find that about myself i'm very creative so you know the, when the school children passing and selling ice cream i used to bag out the ice cream sell 20 dollar cream <laughs> so ice cream don't fast so even though you're doing it in small portions it will fast so you already had that entrepreneurial skill in you yeah, already yeah. that drive yeah so when the shop started doing well um i stocked up one saturday because i stuck up on saturday because you know people come out to buy on a sunday and the sunday morning when i went uh, when i went out there i just ashes must say ashes so somebody broke into the shop steal out all of the goods and then burn down the shop wow so they not even leave the shop for my can try to restock again you know they burnt it down wow so at that point i got I, um 
I was really set back and um, how did that make you feel though? It was it was devastating because I, I put um I really worked hard to try and open the shop so it was very devastating for me because I was just thinking what am I gonna know? Mm -hmm. Because I really want to work. I right. really wanted the car. Yeah, I really want. I really want the car. So just push back the, the, the car dream further away. Yeah, yeah. So at that point, now um, I was twenty one years old and um, you're twenty one. Quick do a twenty one. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, I yeah, went yeah, back yeah. to the bar, still I work, still I yeah. try to save up on something. But at twenty one years old, um, I got pregnant again. Again? Yes. So that's my second child. I didn't hear about the first one. So I no, I got pregnant at eighteen. Oh, you got pregnant at eighteen. Yes, okay. I got pregnant at eighteen. Um, and so, at twenty one, you had your second child. So at twenty one. So two children at, at two children at twenty one, still working at the bar. Mm -hmm. What was your boyfriend doing at the time? Um, he was working at a supermarket because he's actually younger than me. Okay. Yeah. So okay. he's a year um younger. Okay. So he was working at a supermarket. We were trying, you know. To make twins meet you know you're young and you're in love yeah yeah <laughs> so. <laughs> so at age 21 i had my second child and it got it got harder you know they burned down the shop you know you put a lot of money into it but and wait after you had your first child mm -hmm. what did you what what work did you went back and do what um you? the bar i went back to the bar so who kept the baby grandma Oh, so grandma was in St. Andrew? St. Mary. Oh, his mother? His mother, oh, yeah. okay, okay. So okay. she would keep the, 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 the baby son. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, um... 21, now you get the next year. Two baby at, by age of 21. By age 21. So it was rough. When a festive don't have a bag of thing, my hey, boyfriend. Yeah, it was really rough. It was really hard because I knew, I knew um, the goal that I had and having another child wouldn't make it easier. So, so did you feel like it was a setback? How did you? What did it make you feel? Like? I yeah, I felt like it was a setback, but um, I'm not the one to give up. Yeah, I'm not the one to give up. So um, so after I had my child, my second child at 21, I left Saint Mary and we came back to Kingston. Okay. So when we came back to Kingston, at that point, my husband was doing security work. Mm -hmm. Right, and um. I started applying for jobs again, but then I met this um, lady that she works for the recruiting manager at Marksman, and I asked her, I say, you know, can you assist me with No, ma'am, before you, before you apply to Marksman, where did you go? Where I went? Did you apply to the JDF? Yeah, I, I was always applying. I applied for JDF, I applied for JCF, and they turned me down um, because of my height. Yeah, so while I was sending out resumes to call centers, wherever I could get work, I even remember going into like a wholesale asking for work. And the, and the China lady looked at me and she said, too short, man, too short. <laughs> too short. Everybody had turned me down because of my eye. And um, even, when I, even when I went to the recruiting manager, um, the, the person that knew the recruiting manager and I went in for the interview. For which, for which, which company is this? For Marksman. Okay. So the person that was interviewing me was saying, are you sure this is what you want? Because he was looking at the fact that I have um, seven subjects and he was saying, are you sure this is what you want to do? And I said, yeah, man. What I, position were you, were, were you applying for? Security guard. With seven subjects? With seven subjects. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Because you I just wanted to earn. I just wanted to earn some to buy the car. Yeah, you just want money. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you were doing. Once it was legal, yeah, you were willing to do it. Yes, yeah. So um, he was asking me, "Are you sure? Are you sure you can manage twelve hours? Because my little, little bit, oh my God, manage security work." And I said, "Yes, of course I can manage because I was already preparing myself. I may say, listen, to some 48, 36, 48 hours me applied for them, because twelve hours now I cut it." And he was asking me if I can manage 12 hours. So I remember when I started working at Marksman, they sent me to this location that had short duties. Right? So where are your kids at this time? Um, I had to send them to St. Mary. I had to send them back to St. Mary because I couldn't manage them. Because remember, my husband now doing security work. I'm going to do security work. So we had to send them back to Why did that make St. Mary. Though? How old were they? Um, my youngest daughter, she was about one year and two months. And then um, the oldest one, she was, uh, uh, I think, about four. Yeah. Why did that make you feel of the scenario, young kids? It was hard for me because I always cling to my kids, you know. 
So as a mother, you don't want to know that you are here and your kids are um, way over there where you're not able to see them. And then because of the work and because of the goal that you have, you know, you're going to have to put in more hours. So it was really hard for me to do that. Okay. Yeah. But um, I always I always felt comfortable with where they were because the grandmother take very good care of them. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, but when I sent them away, I said, listen, I have uh, one year. To get my kids to get my kids back so i'm gonna use um a one year, year for them to come live back with to you come live with me yeah so i'm gonna try and do it in one year i'm gonna try and get the car in one year so it means that i can do regular duties so the first um place that they sent me was um it was ncb towers but the duties were short so it was like from eight o'clock to four o'clock and then five it's like eight hours and then five days a week so when i check it out i said but this can not help my bike here <laughs> right so um i called the lady that um she does rasta and i said to her um i can't get i can't go on a location that is more difficult where they need they need um security guards and they, i can get extra duties and so on and she was like really because everybody wanted to go at the towers because it's easy but i didn't want anything that's easy because it's not gonna help me build so they said, all right, ain't no problem. I'm going to send you to, I'm going to send you to Pegasus. Everybody around from Pegasus. I said, no problem. So I went to the Pegasus and I said, every duty my can. Why were they it. running from Pegasus though? Because it's very hard. It's a very hard location to work because you have to be on your, your feet for like 10 hours taking goods. And they usually send, they usually transfer security a lot because sometimes you mess up if you're not focused. And then um, because of how I work, I work very well. So they had like this specific post where it's like the mom deliver the post. <laughs> so sometimes when I go on my foot, them so well to all long my first stand up. But you had to win. Yeah. You had to win. It says something that you, you believe it. if you believe that you're a winner, mm -hmm. you, what will, you will do what it is that you believe that to win. Yeah, yeah. I even not fail. Mm -hmm. Failure was never an option for mm -hmm. you. I wasn't gonna fail. So, so how much hours you work at the Pegasus now? So I used to work like, um, so it was really 12 hours duty, but I used to work like 24 to 36, sometimes oh. 48 hours. In a day? Yeah, yeah. yeah. One day having 48 hours? <laughs> Not two days that. So, so 48 hours is like two days. So yes, you work two home, days straight. Without going home. And then when, wow. so say for instance, I would go on duty Sunday morning. So I work Sunday morning and then I work Sunday night, go right back to Monday morning. I work Monday morning, go right back to Monday night. Monday night, right back to to. That's so Tuesday funny, morning, you know? and then, that's 24 hours, and, and then Tuesday morning now, I go home God. and I come back okay. Tuesday night to do another double or triple again. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Wow. So I was trying to, to come up with the funds. To just buy a car. To start you made a car. You were, you were yeah. going to become a financial advisor in yeah. one year and get back your kids. Yeah, and get so back you were, my you kids. Would, you would just do what it takes, no sleep. Yeah. Team and no then, sleep. And then when I uh, get the opportunity to actually go home, I was going to drive in school because I couldn't drive. Oh, so on the days that you were at home... That I'm supposed to go home and get rest to come back to work. You were doing I would, driving lessons? I was doing wow. driving lessons. Wow. Yeah. No, Shereen, you have a real sad. <laughs> so you work Monday straight. So, no, Sunday straight. Monday straight. We're not at dinner day now. Monday day, Monday night. Mm -hmm. They Tuesday morning. Then so, no, Sunday. No, let me get it right. Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Go right back until Sunday night. Right until Sunday, Sunday night. Go right back right. until Monday morning. Then Monday morning, so after, uh, you come off Tuesday. Tuesday. And when you come off Tuesday morning, because when you come back on Tuesday night, you should be resting, but mm -hmm. you're not resting. You're doing driving, driving. less. Yeah. You have to learn to drive for car, drive a car. Yeah. Now, this is what determination is. Yeah. When you want something, you go after it. Yeah. Wow. So, she had eight subjects and doing a security guard work. She never, she never busy what kind of work. She, she was just going to do what she had to do and then to achieve what she wanted to achieve. That is major, yeah. very major. No for, no, for, no for people not take up security work with that eight subject. True. They might whip on the perfect job. You don't have no perfect job. You have to do what you want until you can reach until you want to reach her. I tell you, and I can so relate to what you're saying because I remember when I was going to face the community to work. Mm -hmm. And they said to me, we don't want to buy no masters. Mm -hmm. 
and I was looking up, I stopped work and I wanted a job and I came at the bottom level. But I said, even if I didn't to sweep the floor, I would be the best floor sweeper <laughs> ever. Yeah. Not only did Sherin go there and just be a security guard, she was so exemplary in what she was doing that they kept her one post, the most important post at Pegasus for the entire time. They never want to move her. Yeah. So it was, she was a security guard, but she was an excellent, she excel she was excellent as our motto in what she was doing because she know, knew where she wanted to go as i said when i went to face it i went there at the bottom level and i was the best um uh, promotions candidate there was i'm not getting up for money for my masters but i did it because i knew, knew yeah. where i wanted to go within yeah. six months i was promoted to the brand manager if i never took that push and did my best at that yeah. i wouldn't have been there yeah so continue now, Sherry, you now, because I'm really, really excited. Because you work and you got to drive and so you really never get no rest in the day. No, I wasn't getting much sleep. So even at one point, I took some pictures and my item was going out all. Wow. And then I had um other security guys, they were asking me, Sherry, why are you doing yourself? So you're going to mash up, you're going to sick. I think one point I got sick for you, you know, <laughs> mash up. <laughs> and then I have to take two days off. But by the time I, I felt better, back at it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And then you had like um persons I had friends that would tell me, Boy, you know, find one one where you can come out. That you know, not easier for do than you yeah, kill up yourself. Oh for kind of man. Yeah, we you know, try to come out man or something. If you want the money. Wow, but that wasn't that wasn't your thing. Yeah, it wasn't wow. my thing. So um Putting in all of the work and I eventually saved up enough to start out the vehicle. So as soon as I got the vehicle, yeah. I um, applied for the job at Sajikor because I said, listen, the amount of places were turned me down one day. I said, listen, I have no reason for telling me no. So you got the vehicle? So I got the vehicle and I applied for the job. So when I applied for it, um, I got a call from... Miss Morris, who is now my um, unit manager, mm -hmm. and she she said, you know, you gonna come in for an interview. Oh, um, but before you applied, before you applied for Sajikor, Corps, mm -hmm. how did you when you visit? Did you get to visit the children in at all? Yeah, um, so you not get no time off from work. So when you find time to visit them, I could hardly I could hardly visit, and when I visit, I would have to go and just come back same day. So how that made them feel? Um. They used to cry all the time and ask why they can't come, come and live with me. So it was very, at one point, I started visiting less because it was too much for me. Because when I come back, it's like I was going in depression. Because to know that they are sad, you know. Uh, you know what kids are. It's yeah, the mommy I go away, it's that you're not around daddy. So it, it made me feel very them. depressed, yeah. I remember at one point, before getting the job at Sajika, I remember one point when I went for them, it was a Christmas. It was a Christmas Eve. I went for them and you know grand market night and so on. I had to I I I went for them the Christmas Eve the morning and I had to bring them back in the night because I had work the, the Christmas other day. day. Wow. Yeah. So grand market and we're walking and you know person selling dolls and balls and all of that and um my oldest daughter looked at me and said, Mommy, I can't get a doll, I couldn't even afford to buy my kids a doll. Wow. I couldn't even afford to buy my kids at all. I was putting in a lot of hours, but because of the aim that I had, you know, you have to make sure, say, when the time come, you can achieve what you say you want to achieve. So it was very sad for me because at that point, it worked out the price for a dollar. Could I get one dollar for fifty dollar when they are hundred dollar? I never have it. Hundred Jamaican dollar? I never have it. Wow. Hundred Jamaican dollar because mm. you had a goal in mind. Yeah. Cause must must spend up everything for the car. Everything must spend up. Because oh, wow. remember, you know, when I was working, I had to be spending money to go to the driving school and to pay for all of this. And then um, it's two homes now, so I have to buy food for my house and then ensure. Because one thing I always ensure that my kids have proper meal. Mm -hmm. So it so you I was send food there plus food mm -hmm. for your house. Mm -hmm. And your husband and a security guard. Um, security guard, yeah. Um, it was your boyfriend at the time. Yeah. And a security guard, your children's father at the time. And a security guard. Um, salary. Mm -hmm. So was he working as hard as you are so many hours? No, because where he was, he wasn't um, given that opportunity because it wasn't really a company a like Mark's money. It was like an apartment that he was working. Oh, okay. okay yes, yeah, so okay, it was okay. like three of them 
and the duties shared between them so they couldn't put in like extra duties or anything like that but one of the things was that he you have a very understanding partner yeah because he understood you working those hours which means that you spend less time together yeah we do wow yeah for the greater good mm -hmm. for the greater good mm -hmm. it's very good to have that kind of partner that supports you in everything that you do yeah Yes, I go on, Shereen. So, um... You said now you come to Sajiko, you apply to Sajiko, can you get your car? Yeah, and I got the call from Miss Morris. And I was excited because I'm saying, listen, I'm closer to getting my kids back. But then when I found out that the process for pre-contract is like... <sighs> trust me. Because it was already a year, and then pre-contract was going to take about three to four months or so. But then when I even eventually um, got contracted, um, I called my kids and I said, you know, we're going to come and pick you up. And we reached um, St. Mary, you know, they pack up on everything already, you know. They run left them bag gone in the car. And I said, oh, no, no, come help with the bag. Them now come out because they decide to so, no, no, leave we. Yeah. Because we remember, we usually come and then we leave them. So when once them here say, all right, they're come and they're going to stay, they gone in the car. I remember coming over. I just a cry to how I feel, to how I feel overwhelmed for no say, you know. Um, I put the goal out there and no matter what was going on. No distraction. No distraction. Wow. That's that not easy for you know? I can't tell you that you know? That's not easy for you know? That's not an easy task to do. Mm -hmm. For sending your children away, your young children, yeah. for work how much hours, because that's not a fight, that come like 72 hours a day at work. <laughs> Yes. For work so yeah, many hours, we don't sleep and then go drive another day and then go back to work in the night. Now, that is sheer determination. Yeah. She wanted our car, she was going to get our car to become a financial advisor. And then, I, even on pre contract, uh, because I was still working at Marksman while on pre contract. So, if I put in the hours the same way, and um, wow. I didn't have to come to class, so I would oh, leave yeah, from, yeah, before, from yeah, work. Yeah. <laughs> so, I would work night shift and then leave from work to come um, to Sajikor to do the um, pre-contract to the classes and so on. Wow. Yeah. So I remember uh, in pre-contract, they said, um, I have to do OLT and equity at the same time. Yeah. You know, not more OLT and equity, and it was a short space at the time. Yeah, the court is very short. Yeah, and I said, boy, I can't afford to come so far and fail. So in the night when I was at um, Pegasus, at the staff entrance gate and the staff were passing and they were saying, boy, you're determined still, you know, because I'm seeing at the book because I try to make sure someone understand what I do, you know, oh. because when OLT and equity, I have a pass, which I did. Because, so. you can't, because you can't become a financial advisor until you pass those two subjects, yeah. which is a requirement of the FSC. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, when I eventually got the job, trust me, it was, it was, it didn't stop there for me. It didn't stop there for me. When I really look back at where I'm coming from and how hard I, I work, you know, going through um, bar work, a lot of persons criticized what I do back then because they were saying, boy, several subjects you're getting. A lot of persons they knew, especially persons within my family, they knew that I had a lot of subjects. A lot of, a lot of people from your school. From school. So it was kind of a little embarrassing, but yeah. they were doing it the same way. What tell them what through depression? What through depression? Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then, then having two kids, you know, persons judgmental and they're saying, boy, she has seven subjects. Because she had a good at school, she, yeah. and she got seven subjects, and have two picnic, and, and, and yeah. I know that. And we, people can she be so judgmental at times. Yeah, I know wow. she has security work. We're not doing a security work, and you're not afraid of it. Trust me. But that never stopped you. Never yeah. stopped me because I knew where I wanted to go, and I knew I knew that I didn't. I wasn't going to be a bartender for long. I knew I wasn't going to be a security How long were you a security long. for? For a year. Oh, one year. One year you work yeah. for two years, you pick them one year, you one get the car in one year. one year. Did you do a vision board or did you write it down or did you do anything like that? I didn't write it down. You just spoke just, it and yeah. just did what you need to do. Yeah. So guys, we can manifest whatever you want, but you have to do work behind it. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen overnight. We have to do work behind it. And a lot of time while I was working at Marksman, as I say, I felt depressed. And um, I always find songs that would encourage me. Yeah. So even um, with what I'm doing now, it's always, so I always find a song that encourages me Tell me one of those songs though. Like, which song are you thinking about? Like, well, before, um, when I didn't have my kids, I used to listen to um, Shirley Caesar. 
um, you'll do it again. Just mm -hmm. take a look at where you are now and where you have been. Even up until now, sometimes, you know, things not, might not be going your way like last year during COVID. And it was a rough, it was a rough year for me. But I always know that when I look back at where I'm coming from and where I am, I know that I'm gonna, I am going to be great. Yeah, just wait. You did a speech at um when we had our retreat, yeah. and you said that you are thankful for Miss Morris for seeing your potential in you and for giving you the opportunity to be in this career. Mm -hmm. You said Miss Morris saw me as a seed, mm -hmm. no matter how many weeds and rocks and dirt that surrounded me, all she saw was a seed that needed to grow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, because um, from the first time Miss Morris spoke to me on the phone, she was like, oh, wow, when I told her who I go about it in the car, because she asked me, she said, how did you come about applying for um, for the job? How did you hear about the job? And I started telling her about how I was a personal assistant, and I asked her about it, and then I told her, she was like, wow, I need to meet you. So from that time, I know up until now, Miss Morris is one person that really believes in me. So if I tell her, Miss Morris, I'm going to do something, she know I'm going to do it. Wow. And you said um, she, she saw the seed because she saw that it needed to grow. Mm -hmm. You said you would be surprised at how people would change if there was just someone to look beyond their faults and their needs. And see their needs, yeah. Because sometimes you're going through... I remember times when um, I believe that I could have gotten more help, but persons weren't willing to help. Why though? Um, be, be, probably the choices that I would have made, you know, leaving home at 16, um, boyfriend, getting pregnant. It's, it's like people yeah. give up on you, like they must say, no hope, no, that is so. I have to read this again with Shireen. Shireen said, you would be surprised at how people would change mm -hmm. if there was just someone to look beyond their faults and see their needs. That's a powerful statement. Mm -hmm. Just one person to give you a chance in life. One person. Just one person. Everybody, everybody was telling me no. Everybody was telling me no. And Miss Morris And Miss Morris fight with me right through pre-contract until I got contracted. You said when you came here, you felt you were feeling like it was covered in dirt. Yeah, I felt like I was at the bottom. Why? Because looking back, I was like, I was a bartender. My resume didn't look good. I was a security guard. You know, I now walk the walk and talk the talk. Because when I came here, everybody dressed up, everybody fancy, you know. Yeah, and you and you just come because you, you weren't exposed to the kind of world that... Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you come and you're just dressed and you just do it. You just felt like you were covered in dirt. Yeah. So what, what made you feel different? Like, why? what, what changed? Well, um... When I realize my when I realize my potential because I always not had potential but coming here I was like all right then I I have to be great here because no matter where I go I always stand out and I say I have to be great here and and then you have persons that would talk to you and you were one of that persons where you say you're a security guard and you know you always like, give me that boost and that energy so. Um, I just and, and I, I remember your story for me was I, just so amazing. I remember when I walked when you had the cubicle and I saw the big rookie trophy and the Ipa trophy them and something man. I, I stood there one day and I was looking at it and you walk up and you say, you're like I think you were saying you'll get a trophy here. Yes, I did. You want a trophy? You say I look on it. I did. Yeah. Because I saw the potential in you and it, your story for me was just so amazing from a security guard yeah. to a financial advisor. Yeah. Not just a regular financial advisor, a top financial advisor yes. in our branch and in the company. Mm -hmm. Qualified for MDRT two time, Century Club, all of that. Mm -hmm. But Shireen, becoming a financial advisor now, you have some look at drama where they take you. <laughs> like when you know her the first time, where do I think you met in an accident? Yeah. Tell me about when that when, when I was on pre contract, I met in an accident. With the car? Yeah. And, and when I started driving, because I was, when I went to driving school and I, and I um, went to get the license and I had to drive, I'm not even remember how to start a car because through have so much things I focus on. <laughs> you remember to drive? I don't no remember, remember I'm going to drive in school, I don't remember how to, and, and the guy beside me, he watched me like, he you know, show me what to do. And I eventually um, got, got past that. But when I started driving, um, Everything was just new for me. I used to drive my four-way flasher. <laughs> so I met in an accident. Yeah, you four-way flasher because you want people to say, what? Say, can't come near you? Yeah. <laughs> I remember one time I reached at the stoplight 
and um it was it was they didn't have the filter light. Yeah. Right. So I was thinking, once the light is on green, and you're gonna make, um, you're gonna make this turn. A filter light is supposed to be there, and the vehicle behind me, purr, 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 man, I'm not gonna filter light it. But there was no filter and stuff like. There was no filter light, but me, I say, you know, I was, I was terrible. So I met in an accident, and then, um, you know, when you come to Sajik Corps, you see all of the, the nice vehicles, pretty vehicle, my car, my shop. Right. Mash up. Don't come see him way. You never work business. same way on a business. You never business. Yeah. But you you went to an accident twice in one year? Twice, yeah. If you could never write up. Well, at one point even the, the windscreen break and they were saying you can't drive with it like that, police, police will stop you and we decide to listen. I do my for Wow. Two times in one year. Now your first yeah. year of the business it'll be a crash in time. Mm-hmm. Are you still determined to say you're, you're going to keep the work? Your windscreen mash up? Are you not give up? Are you still going to keep the work? Yeah, but just find one corner and the parking lot for uh, park face in. So I'm going to stay here. Just find one corner. But you say you, say you, was, you were fighting to get, back, to get your kids where you was, that you was in debt. Yeah. And, it was, and you said emotionally I was not okay. But mm -hmm. I said to myself, chin of sis, you are not struggling, you are transforming. So that, so that 30 people in like part YouTube land for me now. What you say? Look in the camera and talk to them for me now, Sherry. Look at yeah. yourself. <laughs> Look at me now. Tell me. Tell them. Yeah, because um at that point, I just felt like I was going through emotional... I, I, was, I was struggling, Wendy. I was struggling. I was in debt with a lot of people. And um persons were calling me. So I wasn't doing good at all. But at that point, I was saying, listen, this is a transformation process for me. Wow. So hold up, continue hold up, it is a transformation process and persons are going to see me. The same persons that say, bartender, security mm -hmm. guard, those persons are going to congratulate me one day. Wow, mm -hmm. wow. So starting at Saji Corps now, what was, it, was it hard at, start, at the beginning? Was it, what, what was it for you? It was, honestly, it wasn't, it wasn't so hard for me. Because the persons really gravitated to my personality for mm -hmm. once. It was very easy for me to speak to persons and encourage them to um, do proper financial planning. So it wasn't really that difficult. But the paperwork still. Paperwork, no. Yeah. 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 Right up the I don't have an assistant. I don't have yeah. an assistant. Yeah. yeah. But outside of that, I was I was getting a lot of clients. So you really enjoy what you do. Yeah. So you I really enjoy what you do. And you say you move from earning how much per month? Um, I think I was earning about fifty per month. As a security guard. As a security guard. And when I started at Sajikor, I was earning like over three hundred thousand. See that guy? Month. Determination. So guess yeah. what now? Look on the matter now. As a security guard, she earned fifty thousand a month. She worked as security guard for one year, a six hundred thousand for the year now, and she still buy her care, mm -hmm. and she is still have to send food for her children them, mm -hmm. and food for her house. She still have to leave. She have to take bus. No, they get picked up because you work night shift. No, I would have to take the bus. See, she take the bus go home, mm -hmm. and sometimes I would walk. Walk from where? From Pegasus go away. Um, I was living at Ugly Park Road at the time, so I would actually walk to work. Wait, 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 yeah. wait, 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 back up. Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So you left Ugly Park Road? Well, yeah. I walk from my place at night time? Yeah, yeah, so if I'm on night shift, I walk from Ugly Park Road. Go By to yourself? Pegasus. Yeah. And on my way, I walk. Go, I don't have bus fare. Where am I going to get bus fare from? Jesus, deliver us. <laughs> what do you mean, Sharina? You never tell me that part there. Eh? You yeah. walk, to walk from yeah. Ugly Park Road to Pegasus. Pegasus. You don't know that's a, that's a decent walk, you know? That's what she wanted. What she wanted. Especially no, when you come girl. off a triple and four duties. And your foot swell up. Huh? And foot swell up. So you walk when your foot swell up, Sherry? Take my time over though. And listen to my music. I love massacre music. Yeah. Wow. Music. Wow. No, Sherry, they make me just feel cold, but take my girl. Yeah. So you used to eat food like, you used to bring lunch, what you used to do? I used to bring lunch, you know, but here what now. Here what me and my husband used to do. So I always ensure that my kids have, have, have proper meals. So we buy a lot of stuff for them. But at the house, we buy 10 pounds of rice, 10 pounds of flour, and chicken back. So this time we curry it. Next time we brown it. Next time we fry it. And the bottom of that may I eat. I can't go work. Can't go work. I'm going to let husband can cook. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And then your husband can go. Yeah. Wow. But nobody knew that I was actually um having that for lunch. And then um persons, as I say, where from local persons always like me. So sometimes they used to um give me lunch. Persons yeah. that were they have that personality. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So you move from earning fifty thousand to over three hundred thousand. So now you have your car, you know, for your walk again, my yeah. friend. You have to get the rest. Wow. Yeah. Wow, plus a weekly incentive. So you were contracted in December 2018. Yes. And, and when you still go to your account, where, where, where did it feel? It felt like a champ. <laughs> <laughs> where you said, my offer look good. Yeah, when I got my first, when I saw my first paycheck, I look good, yeah. Girl, I wonder, like, I wonder if I mistake or something. <laughs> but, I just said that morning into the bank, I felt different. Yeah. The breeze blowing on me felt feel different. different the road I was driving on felt <laughs> different. <laughs> I don't think you guys understand how I felt. Yeah, everything felt different because remember, you know, you're broke, you don't have no money, you owe people, and when you check your account in the morning, and you really see what they're in there. May I drive by the bottom of you? Everything just feels different. <laughs> so a different breeze that blow for me. Wow. 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 And you know what? You express gratitude. Because yes. you sent Miss Morris a message. Yeah. So what did you the say to her? The same morning, I said, Miss Morris. I'm so grateful for this opportunity and I will make you proud. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. But I know you have a, a aim for where you want to start to reach. I remember my first money when I gave for pre contract. I was like, pre contract, Yeah. And Mr. Forrest printed out the paper. I can't have a target by ear. <laughs> and said, Here's the first salary. But yeah, they did it pop out on my head. Yeah. That was in September. Yeah. 2016. <laughs> Having a target and feeling like you are way behind, but you know what? I was given 48 hours to a job that I lost sleep over that didn't pay me well. I wasn't able to have my kids around me because I couldn't afford to. I spent little to no time with them. Now I'm running a business. Mm-hmm. So why not put in the extra hours for a job that can help me live my dreams while spending quality time with my family? Those are the words from Shireen's mouth. Mm-hmm. She spoke when she spoke at retreat. Yeah. So she's saying that why give up yeah. when you work for a job for 48 hours and you got little to no money mm-hmm. and this one can help you to realize all your dreams. Why yeah. give up? Yeah. So um, even coming from the security security work, um, I started I start working like seven o'clock in the morning. Like before yeah, curfew. Yeah, she come work very early. Like before curfew. So I used to work from seven and up until eleven o'clock at night, may I walk go um Care park. park. Yeah, because you know where I network. I don't come so early, but I always work late. Every night you yeah. can catch me at the office before curfew. Yeah, so I start working early and I put in the hours, at least twelve hours per day. But one of the things that you did when you came to Sajikord was that you have a lot of negative people all around. Mm-hmm. But you never let negativity, you always find a positive person and find people who are doing stuff and mm-hmm. say, I want to owe them do that. Yes. Yeah. Because I remember the first, I remember um, saying, you were the one that's always saying, boy, I'm going to stop till I a million dollar a month. <laughs> yeah, true. I remember when you um, said that and when you say it, it actually get, inspired me to, to try. Yeah, I'm not sure you're coming to me asking me all the question. Oh, you do this? Oh, you do that? Jesus, you know, say that's not this. Ugh. Yeah, like she was so always wanting to learn mm-hmm. and know how to get to the finish line, mm-hmm. and that is why she ended up winning rookie for the branch in 2018 2019 to rookie for 2019 in the branch. That's a, that's not an easy feat, and yeah. she also, I think, you got the cases trophy. Activity trophy. activity trophy. I got a lot of trophies. In that year. A, for 2019, yeah. I think Sharon got about seven, seven or eight, seven or eight trophies for the awards. Mm-hmm. And for 2020, she barely get one. Barely get one. Barely get any because mm-hmm. COVID hit, yeah. and her coping mechanism wasn't good. Mm-hmm. So she was going into further depression, mm-hmm. right? And then even at one point, uh, um, when you spoke at, I don't remember which event we had, and you were saying. Boy, one at a time conservation lick you. <laughs> I mean, I said, listen, but when you when you spoke about how you still press on, I mean, and and most time when I talk to persons, I say, look at Wendy. Wendy will tell you Wendy firm, but when Wendy talk to talk about conservation, I don't know normal. And if Wendy can have a problem with conservation, then you must know and still pull out. Yeah. So, you know, you use that as um, motivation. Because one time when I retire, such a the morning when I hear a bing, <laughs> you think I lost this. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't come on. <laughs> Stress out. 
Y es la voy a lupar de ese lang. Uh -huh. I said, no, where did this come from? Yeah. But you have excelled in your career, and it's a beautiful thing that happen when you persistent, keep, keep persistent, persistent in following our dreams and achieving our goals. Yeah. The process to achieving our goals can be very painful. What is what? It's necessary. necessary. Sharina said it more than no. She said it's not a speech, so I just going over what she said. Mm -hmm. She said if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Yep. The experience for me working as a financial advisor has been very educating and rewarding. I'm growing and I'm learning every day. Yes. I'm consistently leveling up in all aspects aspect. of our life. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? What do you do for level up? What do you mean you level up? Level up, um, when you look at where you're coming from, the way you speak, the way you attire yourself, the goals that you have, you have bigger goals. So one time it was just a car and when you look back you realize that, boy, I can actually get more. There's more to life than just wanting that. You can do better. Whatever you set your mind to, you can achieve it. So now it's like you have, you have financial freedom, you have yeah. time freedom, you, you can so spend much. more time yeah. with the kids then. Yeah. Because the kids used to come here so much before it was mm -hmm. COVID. Because mm -hmm. remember, I was coming from um, chicken back every day. I know I can afford to eat properly. Hey, kids can afford to eat. I got price, I got push jolly. I should be rich. Mm -hmm. Real rich. Sometimes they muggle in a price a lot. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. That is so amazing. And since the start of 2021, you have been doing excellent yes. so because she was it what you were at um agent outstanding advisor for, for the month of march not for not for, for the, not for the branch in for cases in comp for, for the, the company, company in for cases for the company in the month of march 2021 remember you know 2020 she dropped down and let the ground you know and roll over and i lose our big space around her back yeah. you know because you get based upon how you perform you get offices or you get spaces mm -hmm. and she had a big space but because she dropped down on her face in 2020 it's at one point to be honest i thought she was gonna leave the business mm -hmm. because she had got, gone down so bad were not seeing me. and i wasn't seeing her at really? all I me mean, i feel like me i sure to talk almost every day and i wasn't hearing from her you call her she uh yeah. i know she, she ventured out and tried some things but she come back right back because she realized that the work that she was putting into those things wasn't giving her the reward that she can get when she, yeah. she focused right here. And then at one point I really stopped and I said, listen, I know what I can achieve from, um, you know, just doing well on a monthly basis and regardless of everything that is happening, why am I going to pull through and then I sat down and I put plans in place and I said, this is what I'm going to do. And I just kept consistent. So even though persons were not seeing me, I used to come in on Sunday. I know that. Yeah. So I you, know that. You come in and see me on a Sunday. I come Sunday, Saturday, yeah. I work seven days a week. Yeah. I come in on a Sunday, and Saturday, and I see you. And Sharon, Sharon I will never forget Sharon comes. 7.30 or 7 o'clock on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. First, she's sitting in front of a client and she asks him something. I said, Sunday? Yeah. In front of a client, 7 o'clock? Mm -hmm. But she had to pull herself back up. Yeah. I knew she was always writing, but it just wasn't going anywhere. Wasn't going anywhere. She never gave up. She Far never off. stopped. Even when she fell down, you never stopped. Mm -hmm. You kept consistent. You kept going. And now the rewards are paying off. Yeah. See, you got from the big board downstairs. Yeah. Yeah, Brandon. Mm -hmm. You understand me, I say? But you have a lot of stuff. You say I make self care with effort while appreci appreciating the influential people I have met on my journey. Yes. And so you want the opportunity to thank them. Mm -hmm. wow. And and um, when you really change your environment, that's 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 a major step. How do you change your environment? Um, I mean, when you used to be around persons that were just comfortable with the position that they're in, but you're around persons you know that they are comp they are competitive. They want good and they want better. So when you're in that space, you level now, up. You have to level up. You have to level up. Yeah. You have to level up. Because when they're with me, you know, it's Yeah. Normal. But when they come and talk, you know, sometimes, you know, you're having a down day. You talk to Wendy. The energy where you get after is like, no, man, all right, I'm going to make some food. Like you can move a mountain. Right. Yeah. yeah. You have to learn to so you're encourage not, persons. You're not our own person. So I said, boy, not, not good. Okay, I'm not going to I'm bad. I'm going to get a client I'm today. Bad. Yeah. So you person. change the environment, so you change the mindset. Yes. So you or you I know yes you're reading more and stuff like that. So what are what have you been doing different in terms of your personal development? Um I've been doing like courses because you know that the company offers a lot of courses, so I started doing courses. And you know I have a him, not talk about it, but <laughs> yeah. And I'm gonna get there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 
Oh, Sherry, this is an amazing store from security guard to top of top financial advisor. If you feel like you can do it, watch the story huh? 15, 10 times. How much time you need to watch it to pull out what you need to pull out of this story? Sharon, I want to thank you so much mm -hmm. for sharing this story with me today. Mm -hmm. I love you, my girl. You know, my love, I know me, yeah. I cheer for you all the time. Yeah. Thank yeah, you for giving you. me the opportunity to actually share my story and I hope that even one life, as you say, we can touch one life. Trust me, Achieve from the year much how she work, more you watch. That is why, you see, because I know her story, I try to pull out everything out of her. Mm -hmm. Things that she not remember. I remember when she got a uh, lot so rich. Yeah. When she got her first page, she didn't cry. Mm -hmm. Because she never in her life envisioned say she no financial advisor. And then when I saw her keep going up and what she keep getting. Mm -hmm. And last year, come like, you know, really earn the money, but yeah. they never give up because yeah. sometimes you seem to give up, but they didn't give up. Mm -hmm. So, Shereen, thank you so much for being my first guest on my YouTube channel mm -hmm. and the Wealthy Wendy Show. And I want to thank you, guys. I want to thank you so much for sharing your story th with me today. And I really and truly appreciate it. And as I said, guys, just listen to Shereen's story. Mm -hmm. It can make a huge difference in somebody's life. You feel like there's no hope. Just giving up. Sharon has been consistently doing well from January 2021. Consistently and COVID is still keeping. Mm -hmm. COVID still a keep, but it's not stopping her because she never liked the way she felt in, yeah, 2020. in 2020. So she had to regroup, mm -hmm. find something inside of her to push her and propel her to be doing what she's doing right now. Mm -hmm. Guys, as a financial advisor, my financial advice to you today, please ensure that you do a budget. It don't matter if you have a dollar mm -hmm. or two dollar, do a budget it can make a huge difference in your Good life difference. thank you so much for tuning into the wealthy wendy show mm -hmm.